Right, well, I'm an undergraduate um, engineering student from the University of Warwick, and I've taken a voluntary intercalated year in research this year. And what I hope to do today in a very short space of time is to present a, sh a snapshot of the research that I've been doing during this year. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, use clinical MRI or magnetic resonance imaging as an early diagnostic tool for Alzheimer's disease. So I'm going to divide this talk roughly into three sections. So I'm going to start off with um, a section on why we have done this work. And um, during that time, I'm going to tell you a little bit about dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And then I'm going to go on to the methods that I've used um, to try and get this system up and running and then conclude with my findings, which are quite provisional at the moment, and some of the conclusions and recommendations for future work. So I thought it was quite apt to start with quite a touching quote from the recent G8 Dementia Summit. And the Prime Minister um, was quoted as saying, one of the greatest challenges of our time is what I'd call the quiet crisis, one that steals lives and tears at the hearts of families, but that relative to its impact is hardly, is hardly acknowledged. We've got to treat this like the national crisis it is, we need an all-out fight back against this disease, one that cuts across society. And that really highlights and brings into perspective the problems that um, we are facing with regards to Alzheimer's disease and dementia in general, and also um, the research and the social implications of this disease. During the summit, there were three main areas for action that were identified. Uh, the first one was um, greater research into dementia. The second was improving health care for those people who suffer from this condition. And also the third one was to create dementia-friendly communities. So moving on to the first part of why I was interested in this work, well, I was interested because I'm sure, as a lot of you are in this room, you have had personal experience of this disease, and you possibly may know somebody who suffers from it, and um, it's actually not a very nice condition to have. And generally speaking, most diseases are not nice to have, and that's a general fact. But um, dementia is particularly upsetting um, as much for the person who is suffering from it as are the people around them, so family and friends and relatives. It's a very, very difficult condition. So I'm um, just going to try and make you understand a little bit about what dementia is and then tell you a little bit about Alzheimer's disease. So dementia comes from, a Latin, from two Latin words. One, um, de, which means a part, and the other is mens, which means of mind. And put together, quite literally, they mean that you are taken apart or away from your mind. So that's quite an upsetting concept um, when you think about it. And dementia really is an umbrella term which is used to describe a number of related diseases. Of these, Alzheimer's disease is the predominant cause of dementia, and you can see that that makes up 70% of all cases of, of dementia, with vascular dementia making up approximately 17%, and then the other forms make up 13%. So what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is a type of dementia that causes problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. The symptoms usually develop slowly but get worse over time and in time they become severe enough to interfere with daily tasks. And unfortunately as time goes on, um, not only do you suffer problems with memory and memory loss, 
but over time it affects every organ in your body and um, the symptoms which result such as um, incontinence and difficulty walking are unpleasant and difficult to deal with. So some very not nice statistics about Alzheimer's disease. Currently there are about 670,000 cases in England and a three-fold increase in this number is predicted by 2050. Um, roughly put, it is one new case every 3.2 seconds. So during the course of this presentation, which should be about 12 minutes, there are lots of 3.2 seconds, which means that lots of people are going to um, suffer from this condition. Associated with this condition is obviously the cost and um, you can see that the, the annual cost of one dementia patient is approximately £27,000 and in comparison the other three major diseases, cancer, heart disease and stroke, all approximately sit at about £5,000 a year. Um, just as a matter of interest, the majority of this cost is actually met um, socially, the care of the patients, it's family, friends and relatives who care for the patients. Um, another interesting statistic which I also found from the Dementia Society website is that the annual government and charity investment in research for dementia is actually the lowest of the four main diseases which are considered to be problems or prevalent in this country. So um, you can see that there is a real need for more research into uh, dementia and particularly Alzheimer's disease and one of the main reasons for this is because currently there is no early diagnostic tool which allows clinicians to diagnose this disease early enough for it to be beneficial to the patient. Currently diagnosis um, can only be achieved once the patient presents with the symptoms, okay? And a definite diagnosis can only be confirmed post-mortem or in the very unlikely event that a brain biopsy is carried out, but that is hardly ever done. And the big problem with this is that um, in dementia patients, as you can see on the top right, the image, uh, the brain gradually shrivels and areas of the brain die off and um, it's very well recognized that the brain is one organ in the body that does not regenerate so once it's dead it's dead so basically um, there is medication available to try and slow this down and to try and treat the symptoms that the patients might be having but unfortunately there is no way of actually recovering the loss of function that these patients experience so basically um, they won't get as bad as quickly but they won't actually get better and this can actually be seen um, relatively easily on MRI scans as well so the image on your left hand side is a brain from a patient with Alzheimer's disease and you can see that the folds of the brain are actually more pronounced than in a normal brain and that means that there are symptoms of um, amyloid plaques forming in the brain and basically this is the major problem in Alzheimer's disease is it is a protein which starts to behave abnormally. So if I just tell you a little bit about the pathology of Alzheimer's disease, um, it's actually caused by a protein which is called amyloid precursor protein. And this is a protein that is expressed in humans and pretty much all animals that have been, studies, been studied, but actually nobody really knows what it does. 
what people do know is that it's a really, really important protein because when they try to make knockout mice, so mice that did not produce this protein, those mice didn't survive. So nobody's actually been able to pinpoint what it does, but it obviously does something fairly crucial and that we've got to have it. So what happens is that the uh, protein is processed in a different way which causes this particular pathology. So how did I do this work? Well, first of all, I did a very, very extensive literature review and I read the work that's been done with MRI and I found three key papers. Um, the first of these was published in 1994 by Bartsokis et al. And they found that FDRI, which is the method that we used, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when I describe the methods that I used, highly correlated with published brain iron levels. And also it was a robust and highly significant age-related increase in FDRI in the chordate and the putamen, which are two regions of the brain. Um, I'll just skip through those because I think we're probably running out of time and move on to the method of what I did. So what I've done so far is um, I've done MRI scans of 10 male volunteers ranging between 21 and 68 years old and actually measured the T2 rate, so that's the transverse relaxation rates, which is just a parameter that you get out of the MRI machine. And we've actually measured T2 at two different field strengths, 1.5 and 3 Tesla. Uh, we then calculated the R2 rates and then we calculated the FDRI, which is the difference between the value at 3 Tesla and 1.5 Tesla. Um, this involved um, segmentation of the brain, so I had to study um, anatomical samples and anatomy atlases to try and make templates of the brain regions that we're interested in, and these were actually laid onto MRI scans um, to allow us to measure the intensities and work out the iron levels. And these are some of the early results that we have. This is a radar plot, and um, the line in green in the centre shows a 25-year-old volunteer, which would be classed as a relatively young volunteer, and the other three are relatively older volunteers um, in their 50s. So you can see that in certain areas of the brain, for example, um, the red nucleus and um, putamen globus pallidus, that there is actually an increase in levels of iron in healthy volunteers. So we're hoping that this will be a way that we can exploit to make an early diagnostic tool before people actually start presenting with the disease. So further work is we're hoping to repeat um, scans on the same volunteers but using a different scanner to see if we can reproduce what we've done and then we're going to move on and we're going to start an analyzing MRI scans from Alzheimer's disease patients. So in conclusion, a uh, large number of people that I'd like to acknowledge, I can't name all of them but I thought it was important that I put them up on the screen because this is a fairly complex project and I wouldn't actually be here and have any findings if I hadn't had help from all of these people. And I would also like to acknowledge funding for my intercalated year which came from the School of Engineering, um, the British the Birmingham University Imaging Centre, um, the URSS scheme and the um, Warwick Global Research Priorities Materials Scheme. Thank you for listening. Right. Any other quick questions before lunchtime?